Hello guys, and uh, welcome back to Mon Labo Linux. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a hot topic, which is uh, how to configure uh, Jenkins master and the slaves. So if you haven't um, subscribed yet, you can start right now, because as you can see, we have some hot topics here. You can subscribe, like, share, and comment to help me improve my content, okay? So like I was saying, the subject of today is Jenkins master and slave. Now, what is a Jenkins master? A Jenkins master is a machine that is dedicated to host a uh, Jenkins, uh, Jenkins uh, software, okay? So there's this application called Jenkins that is used for uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Now, you don't need to install Jenkins on all the machines. You only need it in uh, on one machine, the master. And now you're gonna join the slave to the master. Usually people use the master to build their job, which is not really recommended and that's uh, perfectly wrong. Okay, so you should have a, uh, you should have a, uh, at least one or two agents or more that you have to set up so that they can do the job on, on behalf of this uh, uh, master machine, okay, of the, of the Jenkins master machine. So without further ado, let's go right in and create a virtual machine. So I'm going to click on EC2 because that's one of the recent activity that I was doing. And also for your information, you don't need to install Jenkins again on the, on the agent. The only thing that you need to do is to have your agent either Windows or Linux machine, all right? Any machine that runs Java can be a slave machine, all right? So now here you can see that I have one that is terminated just because uh, I was uh, doing something and it wasn't running the way I, I wanted. Uh, here I'm gonna click on launch instances. Once I'm here, they're gonna ask me to choose my uh, Amazon machine image, the AMI that I want. I'm gonna choose the Amazon Linux 2 AMI and make sure that you are on free tier eligible. Now, here I'm going to stay with a free chair eligibility, okay, and then configure instance details. Once here, I'm choosing the number of instances since I want a master, so I'm going to have only one master. And now, what is the behavior when that, uh, when, once that machine stops, right? That's what I'm interested in my case. Uh, I don't want any AMI, uh, I mean, IAM role or policy or whatever. So here I'm going to say that if I sh shut it down, it has to be terminated, to be deleted. I don't want Amazon to charge me extra money, okay? And another place here is the user data. This is where you can automate the, the process of your machine while it is being, uh, it is being uh, deployed. So some of the stuff that you want to install on it. In my case, I want to bootstrap it with this code that I have here, okay? For that, the first thing that I have to do is to uh, put the chibin line here, okay? So that's a slash bin bash. And then after that, I'm gonna copy this right here. I'm gonna put this here, dash y, sorry about that. So I'm gonna copy this right here, okay? So I'm gonna stop here. So if you are following me along and having this document in the in the chat, okay. So you have to have to make sure. So I'm going to put it in my uh, GitHub repository so you can have it and practice along if you want. So here, basically, I'm doing a yum update. After the yum update, I'm uh, collecting the repository from the Git repository, okay and putting it inside the slash etc yum.report.g 
and the name will be Jenkins the repo. And I'm collecting also the the GPG key from the Jenkins uh, on the Jenkins website. Also, I have to install the the EPL really the EPL package. Okay, extra package for Enterprise Linux. So I have to do that. And let me remove this guy here. I'm fear that I'm fearing that you can. Uh, it can uh, cause a failure to my code to execute. So sometimes that order matters, okay? That order matters. So here you can see that I say, uh, this is required to install demonize, which requires, which requires, uh, which is required to have Jenkins on AWS. So on the, if you are practicing that on your virtual, uh, virtual box, you have to type yum install EPL dash release, okay? But you don't really need that demonize, all right? So I'm gonna delete that comment. It was just a comment. And here I'm doing a sudo yum upgrade, okay? Because I'm installing a new repository here, which is EPL. And then after that upgrade, I'm, I'm installing the different packages that I want. Demonize, Jenkins, Java, 1.8.0 dash open DDK dash devel. Then I have the sudo systemctl daemon reload. So if I don't put this sudo, I will not be able to execute this, uh, this uh, script behind the scene, okay? Because I need to use that to run it as a root user. And finally here, I'm starting the, the Jenkins. I'm gonna add the storage, storage eight. That's perfectly fine for me. Add tags and for tags here, I'm gonna put a name and here I'm gonna put Jenkins master. Don't worry, you have to type it. You won't do like me. Okay, here now the security group, okay? The security group is just like the firewall either on Windows or Linux. So here you can decide to create a custom one. You can decide to create a custom one or you can choose existing one. In my case, I'm going to choose this existing one, but let me show you how you are going to create the custom one. So right here, create a new security group. You come here, add role. And once you are in add role, make sure that you have custom TCP role selected. After that, here is TCP. Then make sure that you put 8080. Now, why 8080? Because Jenkins talk on port 8080. So you need to put it that way. Now here, you are going to put anyway for now. Okay, don't worry about it anyway. And we can leave this by default like that. So in my case, for you, you need it. And then you click on review and launch. In my case, I'm going to delete it because I already have one that I showed you. I'm going to choose the second one here. And you can see that I've done the same then view review and launch here this message is perfectly fine because i opened my uh my machine to the world okay and then launch and here you need to make sure that you have a you have an ssh key pair okay so this ssh key pair you can either create a new one if you don't have or you can choose an existing key pair in my case i have one so if you are on windows you will need to uh, uh download putty then convert the ppk the the pen key that is going to generate into a ppk key so in the windows in the linux environment you don't need that okay you can use the um the row uh the row uh, uh key pair to to directly connect to the instance then click here on analyze that i have an access uh, access to the corresponding uh, private key and launch. Now, once it is launched, I'm gonna come here and click on view instances. You can see that I have two Jenkins master. Don't be confused. This one here has been terminated already. So it, it has been deleted. It's just that it needs some time to, to get rid of here. Now you can see that I have this one that is running. Okay, it has a running state. So I'm gonna uncheck that one and check this guy. Check this guy here. 
And here I'm going to connect to it. Okay, you can see I have a private IP and public IP address here. And I'm going to connect to it. Okay, so once I'm here, you come here to SSH key. They're going to give you, if you are running that from a uh, uh, Linux environment, this is what they recommend you to do the remote read only. Okay, so read only, prod. So this means read only. Then here, I'm going to choose this example to connect to it. And finally, I'm going to come here, uh, get my, get this guy, okay? Uh, sorry. So here, I'm going to increase the size, this size, like this, so you can see. And then paste it, type enter. I am doing this here because you know my product, my prod dash key is right here. Otherwise, I would not have this message. Okay. So I'm going to type this. Yes. And you can see that I have nothing here. Okay. So if the, I had some packages to install, it would have uh, been shown here. So it means that maybe our configuration went through. So now let's verify that we have uh, Jenkins install system CTL uh, status Jenkins. So that's not true. So uh, sometimes it's going to be like that. Uh, it, will, it won't go through. So let me check if I had the repository. So I'm going to do ls l on the slash etc yum. Yeah, that oh, uh, I don't know here. Yes, uh, I'm supposed to have yum dot repo, something like that. Yeah, that's the this is it, right? Slash etc yum dot repo. Uh, for some reason, it is not allowing me to do that. So no, 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 no. Okay, uh, that's fine. Yum. Dot repo. Mm -hmm. What was going on earlier? Okay, I had a Jenkins repository that was already copied, right? But for some reason, I don't know why the other one didn't go through the rest oh uh, no i don't think it's that so i'm just going to, i'm just going to try to to do this to repeat this okay so if you want to know why i took those steps i'm going to show you in a few minutes don't worry so now here normally this should have uh, helped us to save some time but it's yeah so it is installing again. It was supposed to do it on the other side. I don't know why. So it's not a problem. Let's get started. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, All right? So upgrade. Okay. Luckily for us, it's going faster. Okay, now here, sudo yum. Uh, you're going to install the Gmonize package and then Jenkins and open GDK, okay? Because Jenkins requires uh, Java to be installed. So make sure you copy very well and then type enter. Yep, it's going to install very fast. So if you come back here, uh, you will see that we have the Java and the Gmonize that will be installed Jenkins as well. Okay, it has complete. Uh, now we have to reload. Okay, we have to reload this. And then start Jenkins. So for some reason, it 
it didn't do that. I don't know why. I'm going to troubleshoot on that and see what is the problem. So I'm going to now do system CTL. Yep. So Jenkins is installed. So the next thing is to access it from, so open Jenkins via the web browser, okay? On the port that we, we just, on the security port that we, we, we open. All right. So, uh, so here I'm going to type, oh, sorry. I have to come back here and get that IP address. So I'm going to click on instances. Uh, check this guy and then the public IP address paste it here and you remember that 8080 right this is where it is helpful yep so now we have to cut this file okay so you can see that here so I'm going to cut that file uh, no, 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 no. I just want to copy, I don't, I don't want to. So we have to cut that file from the Jenkins instance. Okay, so I'm going to do this and then I have this code here that they gave me. Okay, so I'm going to paste that here. So I'm not doing something really crazy here because it's just the basic that I'm doing. Okay, these are just the basic. So now that it is coming, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so here you can see that now this page is appearing. Okay, I'm gonna click on install suggested plugins. So it's gonna go on its side, install, SSE server and whatever that it wants to install. You can see here folder, time stain, uh, pipeline, gate, or LDAP, uh, build timeout, credential building, Gradle, and, and other stuff that it is going to install. So I'm going to pause on the recording while it is doing that. Yep, that was really fast. So here they need a username, okay? So they need a username and whatever. So if you are working for your organization, you can just uh, put the required configuration that they need, okay? And here is the version. So as of the recording of this video is 2.319.1. So I'm gonna just keep and just skip this, okay? I'm gonna skip and continue as admin. And here, uh, just do that. Okay, so now you can see that I have what here? I have the Jenkins dashboard. This is the Jenkins welcome dashboard, okay? So here they require us to set up an agent. So you can come here or you can click on view executor status or you can go to manage Jenkins and then manage node, okay? So here I'm gonna uh, come straight here. But before we go there, uh, Hold on, we have to configure, we have to get to the next step, okay? Set up the Java home path. So we have to find the GRE, okay? Java runtime environment and set up that into the, into that path. So I'm gonna copy this, go to the, to the server, okay? And uh, type this command. So basically I'm removing all the errors, okay? And here you can see that the GRE have this long path here. I'm gonna take from here, stop at the number all the way to the beginning here. And then I will, so you can see that here we have this, okay? Vim tilde slash bin uh, slash dot bash underscore profile. So if you are already on your home directory, PWG, you can see that I'm inside my home directory. So I'm just gonna do something, okay? I'm gonna type vim dot, so it's right here, dash A. So you can see that it's here, okay? So it's a hidden file. So I'm gonna do a vim dot bash underscore profile. And right here, 
I can, so while we are doing this, okay, while we are doing this, I'm just going to launch two other instances. So sorry for, sorry about that, just to, to save some time, okay. So here I'm going to launch two instances for the Jenkins, uh, as uh, for the Jenkins slave, okay. So I'm going to repeat the same process, uh, the same server and the same uh, configurations, except that they won't have a Jenkins. So here I'm saying that I want two, okay. So I'm going to do one and so, I, I mean, you can do the same for the other, but I'm going to do two, okay, so that you can see the difference. And maybe if you didn't understand with the first one, you can understand with the second one. So here, I want to say that if, yep, it's, it's already good, it's on terminated. Uh, let me make sure that it's on terminated. All right. <laughs> okay. So here now, I'm going to try to run that again. So let's keep trying. So bin slash bash. Maybe I'm doing a mistake here, but I know for sure this is how we do that. So I'm gonna, so as you can see here, there is a step for the, there's a step for the, the client side, as you can see, okay? So we're going to install Java, only Java here, okay? So we need to install only Java. So for that, uh, where is that place where we were trying to install Java? Uh, it's right here, right? Yep, it's right here. So we are going to do sudo yum dash y uh, install, sorry, install Java. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, we also need to add a user. I'm gonna call, no, we are going to do that with different users so you can understand this very well. Okay, um, nothing else crazy to do. Nope, nope. So here, the other configuration, we will do that uh, in the, the next step. Sorry for be for being mixing the, <laughs> the stuff here. Okay, so I'm gonna add this, no tags for now. Security group is perfectly fine. Uh, not gonna create one. I'm gonna choose the one that I have already the default one here. Okay, but you don't really need to have a custom, uh, a custom uh, uh, TCP rule for the sleeve, okay? So I'm going to launch and I have the key pair for both. I'm going to check here to say yes, I have. And then, yep. And yeah, so they have been launching. So I can click on view instances and you can see that I have two here. I'm just going to name them, okay? I'm just going to give a name to each of them. So this one, we call it a uh, slave one. Okay, I mean, slave one, okay. And then the other one, I will call that slave two. You guessed it already, right? Okay, so, okay, while they are running, okay, I'm just going to come back here. So since that we have, uh, let me get out of here first. Uh, I want to copy this GRE again because I made some copy in the clipboard. So I'm going to do this. And before doing that, uh, anyway, all right, I'm going to do this, okay? And right here, I have to be here, right? You see where I am on top of path. So I'm going to type I and then Java underscore home equal. And I will paste my the, the Java home part here, okay? I will paste that here. And then I need to reference it somewhere else here as well. So I need to export it. And to export it, I have to put it to this path, okay? I put the column that you see, and then dollar sign, no, with the, uh, yes, dollar sign, Java underscore home, yep. So that's it. And 
then I need to reload this file so it can get all my configurations, okay? Because if I do this, let me do this. So if I do this uh, env, all right, you will see that in this home, this home part, yeah, here's the part, right? You see that there is no Java stuff there, right? For now. So if I now do this, if I now do this, for some, if you have a little bit of chance, we will see that something has been added, right? The Java home part and here it is all right so that that means it's it's working now um what should we do now that we added the java home part there all right we should do the same on the on the jenkins dashboard all right so i'm going to come to the jenkins dashboard all right and then come to global tool configuration taking its time so come here to java development kit okay jdk and i'm going to uncheck install automatically and then put uh, the name here i will call that java just a random name it can be whatever you want and now we paste that path here okay so here it is perfectly fine so if i try to add something like this for example it will complain and say this thing doesn't exist even if I remove like this and put like this, yeah, now it's working because it recognizes that path, okay? And if I put like this, does it work? Nope, it doesn't work. So you should definitely put it this way, okay? So now it is accepting it. The rest of the team, don't worry. If they are red, that's your, that's your problem. So you're gonna click on apply and save once we have once we have done that now we are ready to set up our agent okay now to set up our agent so here we can see that uh, we've done this we just we just uh, did this and then uh, configure your jenkins agent slave okay by clicking on view executor and follow this uh, this step I mean, uh, that's my bad. These steps for my YouTube channel. So we will have the link here. And then do this after enabling SSH uh, connection from no to yes uh, of the line, having password authentication in this path here on the slave machine, on the slave side, okay? Now here on the slave side, you have to, not to make a directory, and all the stuff. So basically, uh, before we, we do that on the slave side, let's click here on view executor, okay? You can have it anyway. So for now, you can see that I have no machine here, okay? So I'm gonna click on new node, and then I will give a name, slave one, and then I will keep it permanent, okay? And then description, I will call this uh, my first slave. Okay, my first uh, Jenkins slave. And the number of view, uh, the number of executor depends on the, the CPU or the vCPU that you have. So I'm gonna keep it to one for now. Uh, the remote directory now. This is where we need to create our user with a specific uh, directory and on the slave machine and come and put it into the master console here, okay? So that's why I'm gonna come back here and you will now see why I was trying to, to gain some time, right? So you can see that I have these two machines, right? I'm gonna click on slave one, connect and copy this. Okay, come to my terminal. And on my terminal, we come to shell here. If you're on Mac, I will type uh, <clears throat> homebrew, for example. I want this like this. So I will paste that here because I'm, I'm still on the side where we have our key. So I'm gonna type yes. 
and uh, I didn't do the sudo em update. For some reason I didn't do it. <clears throat> All right. So we're just gonna make sure that we also have Java installed here, okay? And on the master, to make sure you have Java, you type Java, make sure you have Java, you type Java dash version. And if it returns this, it means that you have Java installed. Okay, so let's go on there. So now let me rename this since we have a different, <clears throat> different um, servers. So sudo hostname ctl space uh, set set dash hostname. Okay. I will name that to uh, Jenkins Jenkins master. Okay. And then do exec bash so that I can have it load right away. And here I will put this to, let me check if Java was installed, dash version. Uh, oh, dash <laughs> vers, version. Okay, version. Yep, it has been installed and it's the same. So make sure they are, they are, they are the same, <clears throat> they are the same uh, version, okay? You can see here that they are the same as of the recording of this video. So I'm gonna copy this command here. So I'm gonna copy like this and come here. Uh, let me increase this. So you can see <clears throat> and paste here, okay? And I call that Jenkins leaf one and then exec bash. Right, now I have to connect the, the other one, which is, uh, right, I'm gonna take what here, uh, grass, let me take grass, All right? I hope it's, uh, it's not too hard for you to see through. And here I'm gonna connect my, my second sleeve, you can click here. I click here, uh, <clears throat> this one, and then check it and click on connect. And here on connect SSH client, you click here, and then you come to your terminal and you put that here, you connect. We also have to update this one, right? So if you, I have to update, so I'm gonna copy this here and then dash Y. <clears throat> and we are going to check that Java is also installed here. After that, uh, before this one finish, let me create a user here now, okay? Because that's the next step on our document. So if you come here to our document, you will see that we have somewhere where it says, um, so these steps here are the steps that we have to do after configuring the, 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 the slave, okay? So here you can see that we have to enable the SSH authentication from yes to no, from no to yes, I mean, and then create a user and reload the SSH daemon. So let's, uh, let's do that, right? So this, this was the slave one. So I'm gonna, copy this like this and come to slave three, uh, slave, uh, second slave and type like this and then uh, execute bash. All right, so now we have a distinction, right? Here is our master, as you can see, here is our slave one, all right, with the IP address here. And then here it's the slave, Two, all right. So now what we have to do is to enable the SSH key, all right? But for now, I'm not going to do it because I want to show you why, uh, why, okay? So now what we have to do is to create our users, right? Sudo 
And then I will call this one Jasmine, just a random name like that. Jasmine, sudo uh, user at Jasmine. Okay, now I'm gonna set up a password for Jasmine. So let me do this as a root user. Uh, now I'm gonna type this shortcut. Okay, and type here. The, so basically, this is gonna be the, the password, okay? But you don't have to do that if you are working with other people, they can look over your shoulder and see your password. And then I'm gonna put here, pass wd dash dash as stating, oops, sorry, uh, as stating, and then Jasmine, the name of the user, okay? And everything ran successfully. So I'm gonna copy this. Okay, and then come to the first uh, sleeve, uh, paste that. Uh, basically, I have to create that user first, right? So, um, no, 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 no. So let me connect us root user here, dash I, and then do, um, what am I, what am I, do I have to do? Okay, so I have to do user add, sorry, user add, and then I'm gonna use a shortcut to um, to run the, the simultaneously those comments, okay? So this means if this one pass, so I'm gonna call this eng, okay? This is the name of the user. If this one pass true, then execute the, the second one which is gonna be here, inch, okay? Then I will run and boom, that's good. So it has, the, those user, uh, they have been updated. So now I'm gonna to connect to those user account, okay? So I'm gonna do um, su, su dash inch on this side, okay? Create that directory, I will call that, um, Oh, sorry. I will call that uh, slave dear for directory, slave d one, okay? Because we're on slave one here. And then we do this, you can see, and I have the path here, okay? So I will move to that and then do this, uh, PW, I mean, sorry. I mean, yep, I have this. And let me do that on the other one as well, okay? So I'm gonna create a directory called, I'm gonna create a directory called, what? So, so first thing first, I connect to the user account, which is Jasmine, dash Jasmine, right? And then I will uh, make there, I will paste that, oh, no, 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 no. So I will rename it because I want it to be two. So to rename, you just put move and then you put uh, the old name that was slave. And then, bam, if you do this, you have only one directory and I will cd to the only existing directory and do pwd. And here I have it, right? So now this is perfect at this point. Now I can now follow the rest of the steps, right? which is to connect to Jenkins and create those remote directory, okay? Remote D. So for the first leaf, let's do that for the first leaf. For the first leaf, I'm gonna, <coughs> copy this and then come here, do this, paste it here, right? That's for the first leaf. So here, here, the labels depends of what you have installed on your machine or the task that it will perform, right? So for example, if I have Docker, I can put here Docker, Jenkins, for example, to say, uh, that's true, I don't have Jenkins on it, okay? So it can be Ansible, it can be a Terraform or whatever, okay? Let me, for example, put Terraform here. Okay, so let's do it like that and use this uh, as much as possible. So it means that it will be always available to be used, okay? Uh, I mean, all the build will be, 
will be uh, gone to to that one. Now here, launch uh, agent by connecting to the control. Uh, to, connecting it to the controller. That's not what I want to do. I want to take launch uh, agent via SSH, okay? And now here they are asking me the host. So the hosts are just the private IP address or the public IP address. In this case, the private IP address work perfectly fine. So I'm going to type host name here, host name dash I, okay? And here, as you can see, this will return me the the private host name or the private IP address. So if you have a GNS resolution, you can use GNS resolution to do the, to uh, to put the host name there. But since we don't, we didn't configure the host name resolution, I'm gonna use the IP address. And here uh, I have to create the credentials. Okay, you remember that we create the user with the password. So that's what we are going to do here. All right. So, um, I'm going to create a credentials for the SSH. So here now I will say, okay, a domain, I'm going to use this, okay? A domain, you can choose what is there, but that's the default one. And then here kind username with password, that's what I want to use. You can do it with uh, SSH username with private key, but here I'm going to use a username and password. Then here, I'm going to leave this code like this and put the password of Jasmine here. Okay. I think that's on the first machine. No, we have. Uh, what's going on here? Why do I have Angel on this? Uh, Ah, uh, Ange here. Oh. oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I have Ange here. And Jasmine is on the other side. So here is Ange on this, on this machine. <laughs> almost, almost messed up. Okay, so here is Ange on the Jenkins sleeve one. And then here was test one, two, three, right? And here, I can just call it uh, my slave one, okay? My slave one and copy the same. So basically you have to give a description, but since I'm, since I'm lazy, I'm going to do it like that and then click on add. And then here I'm, I'm going to select that credential and boom. So now that is done. Uh, keep this uh, agent online as much as possible. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to explain that now. Here, um, no host uh, fire verification strategy. We're going to see where we need that. Okay, then click on save, and as you can see, I have this guy here. Okay, if I click on that, you can see it's launching here. But if I click on it, and I go unlock. You can see that it's attempting to connect via SSH, okay? But it's doing it, it's, it, it can connect to the SSH, but the problem is that uh, it needs this file that you see here, okay? It needs this uh, file in this part of the Jenkins home part. So that's why we need to come to our Jenkins master and follow the rest of the document documentation, this path here, okay? So basically what we are going to do is to create that, create a directory that it needs, okay? And you have to do that as a root user, okay? So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna come here. So it's not able to, uh, to connect uh, to the SSH, to, uh, to use the SSH yet because we didn't enable the SSH on the other side. Okay, so what you are going to do here is to connect as root user first. All right, and then create. So there is this home, This there is this uh, path. Uh, this is the home directory of Jenkins. And we are going to create this file that doesn't exist yet. So we type enter, okay. And now, now we have to, you can see that it is, it says what connection close, right? So it is gonna try, he has a number of tries that he has to do. So um, now 
now that is uh, done like that, we have to do what? We have to enable the SSH here, all right? Because it is not able to connect through SSH. So you can see here that it says what? Keys exchange was not finished. Connection is closed, okay? Connection. So here it says connection is closed. Retrying 15 seconds, okay? There are four more retries. So it's gonna try like that, try, try. And you can see that here it's also say, it also says that the connection to the SSH is not, it's not going through here. Okay. Yeah. So the connection is not going through. So that's why we're going to come here. Okay. And then enable that SSH connection. So if we go, we can do that uh, with a simple user, but not a, uh, not a uh, edge. Okay. Not edge. So uh, we are going to do what we're going to, um, exit from here and then uh, do vim since we are already we don't need a sudo slash uh, ssh okay ssh g underscore config all right i'm gonna go inside and since i'm lazy i'm gonna search for it type slash and then type capital p double uh, a double s and i see that line type enter to say yes that's where i want to be and see right here right password authentication is set to to no all right i can simply type and i to say that i want it to be like this and type pound sign here and enable the one that is on top okay password authentication so it has been set up to yes now so now I have to reload the SSH daemon, okay? Sys, uh, yep, system CTL, reload, reload SSH D, all right? So now if we come here, if we come here, we click on nodes, we click on nodes, right? So you can see that it is still offline because we, it couldn't connect. Now we're going to click on launch, launch agent again, and uh, SSH connection fail again. So he's trying to, he's trying to retry. Connection fail. Uh, let me click here on this. Make it temporarily offline. Make it offline. Uh, bring this uh, back online. You can see the, the labels, right? And then relaunch agent. Okay. So now you can see that he says what here? He says on top here that he needs, he needs this path, right? These are the list of known hosts. So he needs that path. So since he needs that path, you have to come uh, to the document and then copy this command. What is that? The SSH key. So here is the IP address of the slaves that you want to, to, to put there, okay? I'm gonna copy like this to say that that's what I wanna do. And now, so, no, no, it's not here, sorry. So control C is on the server side that you have to do that. So you type enter and here, so you remember this directory dot, dot, uh, dot SSH. Now we are going to create this file with the, dire the redirection, double redirection. And here is the slave IP address. So I'm gonna put <clears throat> the slave IP address here, which is this one. Okay. I'm gonna put that there and you're gonna see. So basically you type SSH uh, key scan dash I uh, dash H and then you put the IP address or the host name and then we type enter. Okay, so what happened if you don't type 
uh, with the redirection you're gonna have something like this okay you're gonna have something like this so that's what we just we just did redirecting it somewhere and you can see now since i've done that it says what that the agent successfully connected and it is online this agent is connected all right you can see that he has he knows that this is a unix agent all right and he has a i didn't even uh, set up the java home part right but he can he can know that there is a java installed on that machine so you need to set up the java home part here as well all right so they can know exactly where to get it all right so but this was what we wanted to achieve now let's do that with Jasmine, right? With Jasmine, uh, Jasmine user. So here, nope. So here, I'm gonna copy this directory. And to do that with Jasmine, <clears throat> so here now you can see that I have two machines, nothing red anymore. Okay, nothing red, just the swap that, I, that is not existing. So I have two machines. I can now do the I can now do the build. And you can see here as actually one that has an idol. So the on the Jasmine machine, right? Let me set up the the the, the SSH first. So I'm gonna disconnect from this account, type in slash etc slash um sshd uh, ssh slash sshg underscore config and then type slash to search uh pass okay and now i'm here right so i say type enter and i'm gonna remove this i type in x and here i'm gonna type i and insert this pound sign now that it is enabled i'm gonna type a uh, system ctl uh, reload reload uh, ssh daemon right right on that side it's done now let's come on the server side here on the server side right i'm gonna uh, click on new node and put here a uh, slave two and i'm gonna make it permanent as well and i'm gonna copy from the existing one I was slave. The existing one was oh capital slave, okay, capital S. So that's why you couldn't couldn't uh, see that. So I'm gonna put that here as well. It doesn't matter if it's capital or small letter. So I'm just following some convention here. So here slave two, okay, and here I'm gonna put the description as my second my second Jenkins sleeve and then the number of number of executor I'm going to keep it to one and then here I have to change that right remember we just copy it so I have to change this home directory and put uh, jasmine slash j2 and here uh, let's say for example I have kubernetes on this one uh, kubernetes right or uh, maybe it's plong as well okay all right use this guy as much as possible and now the ip address here will be different all right so the ip address you're going to type hostname dash capital i yep and get this ip address copy come here uh so make sure that it's on launch agent via ssh and then paste that here now I'm going to add a new credential, right? I'm going to add a new one because this one is for ng user. Now I'm going to add for Jasmine, right? So click here, add. Now leave everything by default. And here I'm going to call Jasmine. That, that's the user I want to use. And the password was test one, two, three. Okay. And here the ID. I'm gonna call that my slave two, and the description same thing. My slave two. I'm too. I'm too lazy, 
sorry about that and here this is the reason why uh, okay here we have to get that file right uh, that credential and here is the reason why we are Jenkins we say that it needs that file right you remember where we created the dot ssh the non a non underscore host file so this is the reason why here so if you check that and you choose non verification non verifying verification strategy it will not try to verify it but it will require for security reason so now i'm going to click on enter and if i launch If I launch, uh, hold on on the, on the logs. Yep, on the logs, you can see that it says what? Key was not finished, okay? Key exchange was not finished, connection is closed, okay? So basically, it can SSH, but he's not able to verify this path here, okay? So that's why we need to, to do it. So let's come to the server again for the, for the second server. We need to do that. All right, so basically, if we do this way without redirecting it, this is what we will we will get. Okay, so we need this key to be redirected somewhere now into this host file. So I'm gonna so for and to demonstrate that. All right, I'm gonna make it small like this and try to reduce the size here. I think you already saw it, so it's not really a big problem how to do it. I can make it small like this. Let me type control L and then paste that. Now look here on the other side, right? It has five, five more tries. And now if I type enter, now let's look here and see what it will do. <clears throat> yep you can see that now it is going through right so you're just waiting for the agent successfully connected and online so this is how we can do the now if you need to do the bill you see that we have to uh, three servers, right? If you need to do the build, because this is the built-in one, this is the master, these are the slaves, right? So now, since you need to do the build only on those slaves, you have to disconnect, uh, you have to disconnect those idle here, right? So I'm going to put that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to click here, right? Sorry about that, it's taking some time. Okay, let me click on it directly and uh, click on configure. And here you see two, right? So I'm gonna remove that to zero. And here I can put any label so that no one can compromise my server. And here I can click on only build jobs with label expression matching this mode, uh, this node and save, okay? Now, if we come to our notes again, <clears throat> you can see that we have only the sleeves. So now if you do a build on Jenkins, so let me do a build for example. So now if I do a new Jenkins job here and I do a freestyle project, for example, I call that uh, uh, test, Test agents. All right, freestyle. Okay. And here, now uh, we are, oh, it's taking some time. Don't know why. So here now, I can come here and no description, okay? And then come here. 
I have nothing else to do, just do the uh, build action, execute shell, and then on execute shell here, I'm gonna do, for example, pwd uh, date command, uh, what else? Something like a uh, host name. Nope, uh, host name, okay. And another thing like, uh, like what? Another thing like, um, let's choose. Yeah, Java, right? Java, Java dash version. All right, so doing that, click OK, apply, save. So now if I do, um bear now if i do bear now so it has it has built successfully right it has built successfully you can see here so you can see that it is choosing randomly a slave machine right you see here so building remotely on this slave okay Kubernetes that has these labels in works in the workspace of this. All right. So if you go into this workspace, you remember that directory that we gave, right? For Jasmine. And these are the commands that we, we run. All right. So this is how we can configure Jenkins master and slave. Sorry if he was too, uh, too long. But I think it was necessary. And now you understand how to configure Jenkins Master and Slave. I'm here to make your life easier and happy learning. Please subscribe, uh, comment, share your share, share with your colleague, and also put a like. It really helps me to keep pushing on this on providing you content uh, amazing like this one. So now I'm going to I'm just going to uh, disconnect my server just to say bye bye. So I'm gonna do a sudo. Now I'm already connected as a root user, init zero to say I'm shutting down. And since I'm shutting down, it's gonna delete backend, right? On Amazon. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, init zero. And also here, init zero. All right. So now if I come here, I come here. Just need to make sure that you guys delete your instances if you are working on Amazon. So as you can see, everyone is being shutting down and then they are going to be terminated. So see you on the next uh, the next video that I'm going to release. Take care and happy new year.